I would stay away from anything that like is super hot right now that you think you would want to play if you were headlining, right? But maybe that artist has B-side records or stuff that's hot still, but he's probably not going to touch. Realistically, he's probably going to play like two hours. So it's not like he's got a lot of time. That's actually a great opportunity for you to dig into your music library and find stuff that like is perfect for that setting that he's not going to play, but you can play and still create good energy and show off your skills and maybe impress important decision makers at the venue, you know? So I would just really prepare your set, try to try to get in your crates really you know, think it through, but also don't overthink the fact that, yo, you're just playing music. It's going to be fine. But besides like the DJ aspect, one thing that is important that like a lot of people don't do anymore is going above and beyond, like just being an opener and playing music and writing out like after your set, being kind of a facilitator for the headliner. And that's so much like technically I'm talking about like, you're like, yeah, I'm done. Here you go. Figure it out. But just like that attitude, because the night is dependent on both of us. I used to stay from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. And I was there all night. I was getting the DJ shots if he's drinking, water if he's not drinking. And I'm the one swapping over because I want him to just hop on pressure free and, and do his thing. Like, you know, set him up. At the end of the day, like you guys are a team and you want the night to be successful for all of you because then that's going to be success for the venue. The hang, man, the hang after the gig is like, that's where friendships get made and, and that's when you learn and that's when you build and that's when you get opportunities because they know they can hit you up and, and they can trust you.